just the challenges of, of facing the San Francisco defense. I mean, they've been really good all yeah. year. Yeah, they've been pretty dominant. Um, well, first off, they have really good players. <laughs> So across the board, and there's no weak links. Um, they're all very, very good players, very talented, um, big, strong, physical, um, very well coached, um, just very sound in everything that they do. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the statistics reflect it. You know, the numbers reflect it. The, the wins reflect it. Um, they're a stout group. Does it start with their front, their front four or five, their defensive line? The pressure yeah, they can bring? it absolutely does. Um, They've been able to get a ton of pressure just with their front four, and that's such an asset. You know, it allows them to have more people in coverage, more eyes on the ball. Um, you know, they've been able to generate a lot of negative plays that way. They've been able to generate a lot of turnovers that way. So, yeah, that's the that's the number one recipe for a good defense is when you can when you can get after people with the front four. How impressed are you by the fact that they? Held Baltimore. I know it was raining, but they held Baltimore down to a yeah. total they're usually not used to. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was a hard fought game, you know. I mean, two physical teams, two similar style teams, right? You know, pound the ball, running it, play great defense, and obviously the conditions, you know, probably affected the passing game to a certain degree. But still, those guys both threw it pretty well, all things considered. So, um, yeah, that was just a hard fought game all the way around. The fact that uh, you guys have injuries in the offensive line, you, know, you have good guys, but you don't have your guys who are usually there. How problematic do you think that is against this front four? Well, you, you just you, you have to have, but you got to have a plan. You know, um, you can't let those guys ruin the game for you. You know, so that's that's our execution. That's our awareness. You know, can't just drop back and hold the ball forever, right? Let them come get you. Um, you got to be able to do enough things where you control the tempo, you dictate how the game's being played. Um, you know, you try to fend those guys off the best that you can. You know, with the things that you're doing. And listen, are they going to make some plays? Yeah, they're going to make some plays. They're a very good defense. But um, we just got to as many positive plays as we can, as many good outcomes as we can, to so that we can sustain the ball. You know, possess it and score points. I know you're in the stretch of these last four games, and I know you guys are still striving to for that perfect game, especially on offense. You know, is, is this where it, you've got to turn it on here? I mean, this is these are the last four games. Starts yeah. with San Francisco, and, and and does it get to a point where it's like, all right, eventually we've got to clean up, you know, some of the issues that we're having. This is what I see. I see us as an asc ascending team, right? So we just want to continue to get better and better each week. Right? <laughs> Certainly, don't want to take a step back. There's still a lot more to be desired. There's still a lot that we can improve upon. So if we can just continue to to, to take small steps each week, we'll be okay. You think since the Atlanta game, you guys have played a lot, a lot better? It was you know, why do you say ascending? I mean, why do you feel that way? Well, because we know what's in front of us. We know what we need to do, and I've seen us make improvements in certain areas when we when we focus on those areas. So we continue to have that same focus, process, preparation. That equals good results. That equals wins. Drew, after all these years, all these games, do you still get psyched to play in a game with yeah. stakes like this? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, every game from here on out is is big, right? You, know, you, you get to this time of year and you get to the position that we're in. Every game's big. Every game is meaningful. Um, you know, listen, we understand the playoff implications as a result of this game, you know. Um, but if you, if you go in with that mindset every week, if you play with that same mindset, it's – it's like you're getting ready for the Super Bowl every week. You know, it's like you're getting ready for that big game, that meaningful game each week. So, if you prepare that way, if you if you believe that in your heart, then you know, when you step out there on Sunday, you know that you've done everything you can to put yourself in the best position to win. That's all you can do. Head to head, last year you and the Rams. Yep. Was it was a deciding thing when it came to yeah who played where? Do you see that as maybe? Possibility with this. Do you hear what I just said about playoff implications? <laughs> I think we all know what this game means. What do you think the dome will be like? Sunday? I think the dome will be rocking. We need the fans <laughs> in full force, right? Um, listen, we got the greatest fans in the NFL, and they know how to create that home field um, advantage. You know that dome atmosphere that uh, that's just electric. It gets us hyped up, makes it really hard for opposing teams. Um, and just lets them know it's going to be a long day, man. We need we need our, we need the Houdat Nation out in full force.
speaking of just ascending, have you seen that from Jimmy Garoppolo as one quarterback to another? Yeah. Over these last listen, you know, he's years? played he's played he's played very well, you know, um since he's he's he got there two years ago as the starter there towards the last half of that season. And I know um he, he got injured early last year, but man, he's he's played very well and that whole team, I mean, you know, in all phases, right? Great quarterback play, great running game, uh, great defense, good special teams, and so hence hence why they are 10-2. <laughs> when, when you say he's played well, and I know you don't have to study him because you're not playing against him, so yeah. do you have any idea, like, can you, do you have any thoughts on what exactly mm -hmm. he's done that impresses you as a quarterback? Yeah. I think he's got, I think he's got good poise and composure. Um, I think he... I think he throws. I think he throws the ball very well. He's a very good. He's a very good passer. I think he anticipates well. Um, you know, I think he processes it well, um, just from what I see. Do you feel like you're all close in some of these big explosive plays? I mean, it, when you watch the film again, it seems like you all are right there. You just haven't quite connected on the field. Close. And We're close. Is there one one thing in particular, or is it just a different thing each time? Um. Just a few inches here and there. Are you are you a little surprised that, that this late in the season you guys haven't won one of those like stupid, silly, good offensive games where you just went crazy? Well, I'd say this, it's encouraging that we're ten and two and we haven't had one of those games. You know, I'd like to have some of those games. So hopefully they're in the future. What's the amount of games that we've ever played? It's hard to say. I mean, there's been a, there's been a number of them. You know, we've had a ton of big games in the dome. Um, I mean, the single biggest moment was probably when Gleason blocked the punt. Um, was that the loudest thing? Yeah. I mean, just as far as just the explosion, right? But man, we've had a lot of those moments, and they're great moments. We want more of those. Drew, I guess. There, uh, anybody just in particular when you were just growing up, getting into football for the first time, did you idolize, wanted to be like watched like? NFL films highlight the. Oh shoot, a lot of guys. Um, I mean, I I got a appreciation going all the way back to guys like you know Otto Graham and Norm Van Brocklin and Fran Tarkenton and Roger Staubach and you know Doug Flutie. And I had a chance to play with Doug Flutie. That was kind of crazy, but um, uh, of course Montana. And then growing up in Texas, it was Aikman and the boys, right? So I mean, so many so many guys that. You grew up watching highlight videos, or you know, watching them play. I guess live on TV, um, and just you. Now that I'm playing the game, I've had a chance to play the game for a long time. You just have even more of an appreciation for for all those guys. Um, pretty, pretty incredible. When you think about the hundredth anniversary of, of NFL football, you know, and this being the year and being a part of that, pretty special. Autogram. Thanks, guys. Autogram. There you go.